Our stories, our voice, our history hasn't always been welcomed. But we learned long ago that if America won't celebrate us, then we will celebrate our own, told our way on our time. Today, we have thousands of black creators in film. Thousands of books are on the shelves of stores around the world, but it wasn't always as easy. For Lena, for Hattie, for James, for Zora, for Langston, we fought for a place in American history and we've empowered our own voices, keeping our stories alive. Remember Philando, remember Mike, remember Trayvon, remember Sandra, remember Oscar, remember Brianna. No more will black voices go unheard. No more will black stories go unread. We will write our own history and create our own legacies. And each summer in Atlanta, we will gather, we will celebrate, we speak out. Black voices matter. Black stories matter. Black lives matter. Everybody has a story to tell. Make sure that you tell yours. Create your story. Dream out loud. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Black Librarian Speak Out. My name is Chandra Sparks Blonde, and I'm an author, blogger, editor, and speaker, and I'll be serving as your moderator for the panel. Thank you all so much for joining us today. I'm just so excited to be here, and I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the staff of CreativeCon for the opportunity. So today in partnership with the Black Caucus of the American Library Association, we're having a conversation with librarians um, and authors and diving into the importance of supporting our local libraries and the opportunities you can align with your local library. We have a dynamic group of panelists joining us today. Please welcome Shantae Burns Simpson, president of BCALA. Dr. Ashley Little, founder of Ashley Little Enterprises, LLC, an award-winning and accredited certified publicist, Sandra Ann. Um, so before we dive into our conversation, just a little about, about our partner, the Black Caucus of the American Library Association. Established in 1970, the, the Black Caucus of the American Library Association was formed to serve as an advocate for the development, promotion, and improvement of library services and resources to the nation's African American community. And to provide leadership for the recruitment and professional development of African American librarians. The organization provides training and development of Black librarians, and it became an affiliate with the American Library Association in 1992. Now, before we get started, let me give you our ground rules. For the next hour, my goal is for us to have a lot of fun and a lot of laughs. Um, this morning is meant to be interactive. We'll talk with our guests and you'll get the chance to ask them questions. So right now um, we have everyone on mute. So if you have a question or comment as we're discussing, the floor, um, you know, feel free to drop, drop it into the chat box and we'll be checking that throughout our conversation. So don't be surprised if you hear something that you type um, read aloud. Also, you can follow the fun on social media by using the hashtag um, CreativeCon, and that's um, hashtag C-R-E, the number eight, T-I-V-E-C-O-N. So now that we've gotten the ground rules out of the way, let's um, get started. To make sure our chat feature is up and running, let's take a minute um, to type in where you're from. I'm tuning in from Birmingham, Alabama. What about you, Sean? Well, I represent New York, but I'm actually tuning in from Arizona. Yeah, oh, wow. for a summit. Yeah, so I'm yes. in a hotel room, but uh, I represent NYC all day. All <laughs> right. And Ashley, what about you? I live in Nashville, but I'm here in Atlanta, so I'm in a hotel room too. So I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> <this week. laughs> and then Sandra, what about wow. you? 
Well, um, I live in Maryland and I represent Maryland and Washington, DC, Virginia, you know, the whole DMV area. Okay. Yes. Well, welcome to all of you all. And we have, um, we have Angela is tuning in from North Carolina. We have Nina is joining us from Atlanta. So um, welcome everyone. We're so excited to have you with us today. So now that we um, know the chat is working, let's go ahead and jump into our conversation. So I gave a very brief intro of each of you, a very, very brief intro. So I want to give you an opportunity to introduce yourselves. So Ashley, we'll start with you. Why don't you tell us a little about yourself and then you'll be followed by Sandra and then Shantae. Well, good morning. My name is Dr. Ashley. I'm going to keep it brief, too. I'm an award-winning serial entrepreneur and 16-time best author. So I'm excited to be here again on this amazing platform. Special shout out to Tamika Newhouse and the team and, of course, Sandra. So just thankful to be here again um, on this amazing platform. Oh, yay. Um, okay, well, hi, everyone. Um, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. I don't know where you guys are, but wherever you are, Hello to you. Um, <laughs> I am Sandra. Um, um, I am from Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, you name it, the tri-state, um, and award-winning publicist. Um, I have my own company, Just One PR, where we are a full-service public relations agency. I've been working with Tamika for about six, seven years now. Um, I think about six years now, I believe. And um, this has been such an amazing opportunity. It's been an amazing platform. I have met so many people and, you know, I, I, I will continue to support it um, no matter how much or no matter what I need to do, because this is something that we as a black creative and, you know, black community, we definitely need something like this, where we can showcase ourselves and our books and our thoughts and whatever it is that we want to showcase without having to cater to other people and other culture. So I'm happy to be here. Welcome. And hello, everyone. Again, I am Shantae Byrne Simpson. I'm a librarian. I'm the current president of the Black Caucus of the American Library Association, as well as the associate director of school support and outreach for the New York Public Library. Thank you for having me. Again, welcome to all of y'all. And we've had some other people join us. Um, we have someone from Chicago, Deshell, am I pronouncing your name correctly? I hope I am. And Tony, Miss um, Tony Benita, we have you joining us from St. Mary's, Georgia. So welcome, welcome, welcome to all of you. Hello. Shout nice out. You. Yes, shout out. Um, and we have someone joining us from, is that Tennessee I just saw pop up? Thank you all. Um, and shout out to Tamika Newhouse for, for um, this opportunity. We really yes. appreciate you. Yeah. So um, let's jump into our conversation. So growing up, and also now I'm just a huge, huge fan of the library. So in 2022, how significant is BCALA in the American library system? And Shantae, we'll start with you. Sure. So I will say that the Black Caucus of the American Library Association, BCALA, so I don't have to keep saying it, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, we are relevant now, just like how we were relevant 50 plus years ago. Uh, the opening credits just showed it. It's very, very, very important that we get uh, Black voices out there. So being able to make sure that we have the resources so that our communities are able to know about the variety of writers and then not just learning about the, the writers that is given in schools, which, which we know are predominantly white. So we want to make sure that our books are seen are read, are shared, as well as making sure that we have the resources so that we can develop young writers so that they know that they have that capability to write and be able to perform and share their thoughts in, um, in an accurate way because fake news is real and our libraries are really, really important in compelling that. So Black Caucus of the American Library Association is making sure that all of our libraries are fully funded with librarians that look like us as well as making sure that we have our resources on the shelves. Well as making sure that we have our resources. So, and Sandra, what about you? Um, I totally agree with Shante. I think that um, you know, right now it's more prominent than ever. Um, it's more needed than ever. Um, you know, we are now coming into places where we need our voices heard. We need to 
be able to see one another and be able to realize, hey, we I can also be a writer. I can also do this. And the library has a lot of resources. It's a plethora of resources. It's books. It's classes. They provide everything. So, um, yes, I do agree that, you know, right now it's definitely an absolutely great thing. And it's um it's it's coming more and we're taking it more seriously like even i go to the library and people are like well you went to the library who goes to the library i'm like you don't know what's in the library okay till you come to it you have to go check it out it's not your um um grandma library no more no this is advanced like they got classes they do whatever like it's you can have um, events there like it's digital you can download digital books for free it's so much but Yes, I definitely think that this is, you know, we we need this, you know, and we need to start going more because it's not your average, your back in the day library. It's different now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Ashley? I agree definitely with, with, with both ladies. Um, it's, we got to continue to change the narrative, right, and share our Black voices and creating those partnerships and give back opportunity as well. So just being involved and being able to provide that exposure of black writers and our black voices so I, I definitely agree that it's definitely needed and we are making those changes and taking up spaces yes so yes. um sandra you mentioned like so about the different um opportunities and different things available at the mm -hmm. library so kind of piggybacking on that how has the library system adapted to using ebooks and audiobooks and what has that transformation been like for either you personally or for um, readers or clients? Absolutely. Um, I think, listen, the li again, the library, they have absolutely stepped up to the 21st century. Um, I'm amazed, you know, like I said, the ebook, you know, things that you actually pay for outside, you can go to the library and download it for free. And people don't know that. They think, you know, you have to pay for things in the library. I'm like, no, it's free 99. Like, literally, everything is free. You go. <laughs> no, it's like, because people don't get it, you know, and the transformation, it's helped because for those of us that are very digital, we can easily go, we can download what we're looking for. We don't have to go out here and pay and we can actually go, you know, and have meetings. And because everything, again, you can connect to whatever it is that you want to connect to digitally. They provide you with the TV. They even provide you with a room if you choose to. So again, I, I, I definitely will tell people like the, the digital age, they are, and they are in with it. They are very up to par. Like the eBooks, like again, it's a lot of books that I've downloaded going to the library that I'm looking online. I'm like, mm, $9.99, what is just free 99 here? Like, come on, people. Yeah. So I know it's, 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 they've, they've improved and I'm very impressed about it. Yes. And Tony Bonita says that we have come a long way from her day at the bookmobile. Absolutely. Um, and what a lot of people don't realize, too, is that they don't actually have to go into the library to take advantage of the resources. If you have a phone handy, which I mean, all of us do is typically you have it somewhere near you. There's so right, many, right. I'm like, right. Yes, yeah, <laughs> like, so many apps available um, in Birmingham. For us, we have Hoopla and Libby that allow you access to thousands, yeah. if not millions of mm -hmm. audio books and eBooks. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is register for a library card, which is free. You can register on online using your phone. And a lot of people don't realize that, that doing that really, why well, I started doing, I want to say about five years ago. Um, and I don't even remember why, I think I'd actually gone to the library and they had a sign up about um, you know, um, Hoopla. And I was like, well, let me check it out and see what it is. And I, I downloaded the apps and I have not turned back. It has been a game changer for me. So um, for those of you who don't realize that you do not have to physically walk into a library to access the resources. So um, Shant Shantae, um, how I'm sorry. How has the library system adapted to ebooks and all the ebook and audio book world? And what has the transformation been like? 
I mean, the like you both said it so so well. So the ebooks and and e audio books, again, you can access it straight from your library's website. So you do not have to physically walk into the space. Even though we would love to see you, you don't have to to check out the materials. And what's also great is that you don't have to worry about late fees. So when you download these materials to your device, you could download it to your your Kindle, your your iPad, your phone. And then after it's um, the expiration is over for the book, it just goes away. So again, you don't have to worry about catching the library before it closes to return it or worry about late fees, even though a lot of libraries are doing away with late fees. Thank God, because we know that that was a barrier for some. But yes, make just being able to download it. And then after the three weeks, two weeks, one week, it goes away and you don't have to worry about it. So we are loving the ebooks and we are so happy that we're able to make sure that everyone has the ability to download the materials. I tell you, in New York, uh, people don't have room to, to store books. So being able to just have the books on your device and we finish reading it, it's, go it's gone. You don't have to worry about buying the book and finding a place on the shelf or putting it in a box or rolling it under your bed. It's right. just there, you read it and it's done. And if you want to access it again, you download it again. It's that easy. And we have a Facebook user who's just said, you ladies are so right. People just don't know a lot of classes, including no, how to write a business life. plan, how to manage your finances are available at the library totally free. Mm -hmm. And our, our user is from Kansas. And that's, I mean, that's everywhere across the country. There's so much. Ashley, um, what about you? Um, how do you think the library system has adapted to ebooks and audiobooks? And what's the transfer transformation been like for you? Authors, right? You know, it gives us more opportunity, more exposure, and being able to have it in the library and in the national, even as well as the national library system, that brings more eyes to uh, to to you, and it also creates, as I stated, more opportunity. So it's been amazing. You know, the digital is definitely the way to go if you want to, you know, increase sales. If you want to increase more opportunities, exposure opportunities for yourself. Ebooks are amazing. That's where everything is going anyway. So it, having a library has as one of your resources definitely um, important. A lot of people outside the library is one of the top your uh, you the exposure out there and get your name out there you know making those libraries critical and actually you you're breaking up a little so i just want to just say fyi um so angela said this is awesome thank you so much for sharing information about the libraries again i'm a huge huge fan so um so we talked we kind of talked about ebooks and audiobooks and stuff you can connect to digitally what are some community service services and programs that are available at libraries that people may not know about? Oh, I know. Anybody oh. want to jump in oh. on that? Oh, I'm like, yeah. I mean, for <laughs> from from what I've experienced, I'm sorry. I'm like, oh yeah, it's a lot going on the library. Mm -hmm. Um, again, they have a classes um on how to do your taxes um um educational resources like they have a lot of they have yoga classes there they partner with certain communities where you can have again certain educational event for kids um it's a lot that you can do at a library um again it's i'm i'm very big on a big advocate for librarians and library because a lot of people are um when you hear library people go oh my god it's an asian word but they don't realize that hey it's a lot that happens they partner up with um, homeless shelters. Prime example, um, it's um, the um, Washington, the Martin Luther King Memorial Library. They partner up with um, homeless shelters that bring the, um, the community over so they can help them with um, job training, um, whatever resources, help them find health insurance. So it's a lot of things that, you know, the library and the community do. So yes, it's, it's a great partnership. I definitely do agree. It, it's a lot that goes on. I mean, Sandra's absolutely correct. We have everything for all ages. So we have early literacy programs. So we work with babies. We support parents. Um, we have homework help. So your kids after school could come in and get homework uh, help. We have um, 
gaming programs for the teens. So it's not just about books. We are community centers. We have resume writing, career development. We Absolutely. just want to be there to serve the communities. So again, we partner with every, I'm not going to say every, but we partner with so many community-based organizations that we want folks to feel warm, welcome, and wanted when they walk into their library. We want them to come in and say, this is my library. And we want them to be able to see the programs that's going to help them succeed in any way. I love that. And I love the fact that you mentioned that there's something for everyone, um, you know, from, from the littlest baby where they're doing story times or, you know, mommy and me classes or whatever, up into, you know, our older, our senior citizens. I've seen knitting classes, <laughs> genealogy classes. Mm -hmm. There's just so much available. So if someone were interested in participating or finding out what their local library has to offer, is it just a matter of going to a website? How do they find out what services are available? That is a great question. So yeah, you could go to your library's website. They will have the list of programs, but it's also great to walk in and um, speak to the librarian there, speak to the library manager and, and let them know what you're interested in. Because again, we want to make sure that the programs that we're offering are relevant for the community. So if you have an idea, we would love to hear about it. We would love to be able to offer a program to support that idea. And whether we have someone on the, on the team to be able to do the program, or if we partner with someone to make the program happen, we would love to just know that you're interested in having the program and being able to come and help us, you know, promote it. So again, we do grassroots efforts. We put uh, flyers out in the community, but we also use social media as well. So I'm sure many of your libraries has a Facebook page or Twitter page, and you can also find out about events there too. Okay. All right. So, um, so we, I'm sure we have a lot of authors who are tuning in. What can, let's talk about the connection between BCALA and authors. How exactly does that connection work? I know um, with me, I've, just with libraries in general, um, as both a traditionally published author and as an independent author, I have had so many opportunities to go to li libraries to um, speak about my books, to conduct workshops, um, pretty much whatever they need me to do, I try and, and go in and help because again, I'm a huge fan of the libraries. Um, so for each of you, what has been your experience in seeing that that author and library connection? We'll start with you, um, Dr. Ashley. Well, it's been amazing, you know, having a partnership with the libraries, which I currently still do, um, having, you know, those book signings, you know, having book signings there. It also have gave a lot of credibility being able to have the books in the National Library System. So when you say that, that gives that gave, gives that more exposure and then creating those partnerships, you know, going in, um, you know, sh showing them the books that we have. Of course, the library will review them and then they come back and most of the time they'll buy them from, from, from you and then they'll, you know, either put them in their programs, whether it's a literacy program or you can come in and do the um, read to the kids. And so it's been great. It's been great. So I've had great uh, success with the libraries. And it's also been just going in there, having those conversations, too. Of course, you can go online, but, you know, nothing is better than having that one on one conversation and then making those connections from there. So it's been a great partnership. I, I enjoyed the port partnership with the library and it brought it has brought a lot of exposure and a lot of opportunities. And I agree with you, I think. I, I ended up getting my opportunities because I took time to actually go into the libraries and just introduce myself um, to the librarians and, you know, just say, oh, I have a book out. And it's amazing just how receptive they were and have been. This from my very first book, which came out in 20, um, 2007, up until now, again, I'm still doing stuff as a result of just taking the time to go in and speak. So that's encouraging any of you who may be listening take the time to go in and talk to your librarians and and you will be amazed at what kind of partnerships can come out as a result of that so what about you um sandra what what's been what connections have you seen between the libraries and authors 
Um, well, again, I, I'm just going to pick it back off of everyone. You guys are absolutely right. Um, the library is, they will help you when it comes to exposure in your book. Um, again, you just have to just simply walk in and introduce yourself. I always say if you have a copy of your book, even if you give it away just to the librarian, think or have a feeling. So, you know, when you come back and want to have those conversations about what can you do, they can actually help you out. But library a is a great way. Walk in, speak to them, take your book over there. Like, don't be afraid to, even if they say no, they can always refer you to a different place or a place that's going to actually help you more than what, you know, the library. But I think like, if you can get on the library list, if they can pick you up, listen, you made it. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you're telling the truth. I mean, libraries and authors, they go hand in hand. I mean, we buy books and we buy a lot of them. So it makes sense for us to partner. Absolutely. So go to your library, do a book discussion, do an author talk, let folks know about your book. Um, BCALA, we have a lot of authors who are members of uh, our association and they are published or they're independently published. It doesn't matter. We just want the word to get out there about the book. And so we have had an amazing opportunity uh, that was actually started from the immediate past president, uh, Richard Ashby. Um, he does a lot of work with independent authors to help get the books into the public library. So there are some criteria, and it's not true for all libraries, but I know many libraries want um, the books to be professionally reviewed. So um, us being able to support that to make sure that we are helping review the books um, so that they can be ordered from multiple libraries. Uh, also being able to, able to highlight um, the titles. So we do have literary awards. Uh, we started with literary awards uh, for the youth last year. I'm very, very happy about that because for many years we were solely concentrating on adult titles, but now we have the youth literary adult awards and we're a senior because that also makes a difference with how libraries publish books. So we wanna make sure that these seals are available for our titles that we are recognizing and we are recognizing independent titles as well. So BCALA, we are in it to support so BCALA, good we literature so that it's well aware for everyone. Awesome. So um, Ashley, was did you wanna add to it or? Absolutely. I mean, everything that Shantae said, and I mean, even with the HBCU books that I um, have been working on, I have worked with Richard. And yes, you're right, Shantae, y'all have a program to books and then donate them to the kids. So, I mean, there's so many opportunities. And also, when you in the library, you can create your own programs. If you go on and let them know your mm -hmm. ideas, you can create your own programs with them. If, you know, if they're approving and everything, and that opens up even more opportunities. So, it doesn't even, it doesn't already have to be done. You can go in and present what you're trying to do and mm -hmm. work something out and work a partnership out, too. So, yep. for everybody that's Absolutely. listening for that. Absolutely. And you may be asking, well, what kind of workshop can I do as an author? Um you know, look at the different topics in your book and think outside the, the box. Yeah. Um, I have done poetry workshops um, at libraries. I have done author yeah. talks. I've done, um, I did a workshop for preachers who were considering writing a book, um, but didn't know how. So, wow. so don't, you know, don't limit yourself to just the whatever topic your book is talking about. There's so many other avenues you can consider. Um, and it's not a hard process. Once you make those connections, it could be just as simple as going in and pitching it. And, you know, whoever has to say so, it's like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Like, type me and send me an email about it. I mean, yes. it doesn't have to always be like this long, drawn out process. The, the most important thing is to make the connection. Remember, yeah. libraries, they're, they have, um, they're trying to service people. So they they're have looking for different ways to engage them. Um, you know, so Chandra, you're like, right. You're yeah. right. Because April is poetry month. Yes. It'd be great to have someone come in and do poetry. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. so and remember, just like with libraries, 
Um, just like online content is key. Like they need stuff. They need books. They need <laughs> programs. They need all these things. So just be aware of that and don't be afraid to, okay. again, think outside the box. Yeah. So, um, so let's talk about what's the biggest mis misconception about libraries. I think for me, um, a lot of people think that they're outdated and, you know, there's no point in, in, in going in like they're not relevant today. Yes. Today. Mm -hmm. um, but again, as we've been saying, and we'll keep re reiterating this, there's so much available, like you would be surprised. Um, so what about for you, um, Sandra, what's the what's the biggest misconception? Just like you said, um, that is old school. You know, it's back in the 90s where you show <laughs> you guys too much stuff you got to do for a library. Like, Lord, y'all can keep that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so I think that's what a lot of people hear when you say a library. It's just mm -hmm. I think it's a, some might have a traumatic event, you know, where just like you say, the late fees and been hunting down and being caught. So when you say a library, it's like, oh, no. But, you know, because people will easily go online and find things. But in reality, library is like this happening place where you can actually go, you can have conferences. Like it's a lot that you can do at the library. You can have events, you can bring your idea. Oh, library, you you mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a lot. So yeah, I think that um, the biggest misconception is that it's old school and it's back in the day. It's really not. We are 21st century now. So, and, and talking about stuff, I just thought of something else. You people may not be aware. You can also check out games like board games, and even some libraries I've seen do like video games where you can check yeah. out. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily the the video game system, but the actual cartridges for the game. I know my local yeah. library has those, and I guess does it, Shantae? Does it depend on like the library? What what they offer oh yeah absolutely so it's really important for folks to use their library to make sure that they are spreading the word on how important the libraries are because funding is key so all libraries mm -hmm. may not have gaming so we actually um I'm, uh, like I said, I was um, I am Associate Director of School Support and Outreach. And what we do is we do create uh, what we call teacher sets that get mm -hmm. delivered directly to schools for classroom mm -hmm. use. And we will ship uh, a PlayStation to a school with mm -hmm. gaming because there are educational games as well. We will right. ship board games. So again, being able to get that funding is because we're showing use. So mm -hmm. making sure that you are utilizing your library, making sure that your government officials know how important mm -hmm. your libraries are, will help with funding so that your libraries can buy more, can buy more of your books, can buy more resources that can be used in the library. So yeah, thank you for asking that question because it is really important. And, and yes, many libraries do have gaming. It's kind of like, um, it kind of like lures like the teens in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they do other educational programs. So it's like, yes, Absolutely. we have gaming. They'll play games for an hour. Then it's like, oh, go to this poetry workshop or this, you know, spoken word grand slam, you know, then they everybody's rapping, doing everything else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then they, everybody's rapping. Absolutely. And so that's nice. what I, I would say that the misconception is, is that uh, the libraries are nothing but a building with dusty books with a little old lady with her hair up in a bun. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. not what the libraries are. We no. are doing a lot of things, a lot of cool things, if I say so myself, but yeah. come in and see what we're doing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and Tony Bonita says, people do not realize a library is more than books. That's why a lot of them are now called media centers. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yes, Tony. Yes. So, Absolutely. Ashley, um, what do you yeah. think are some misconceptions mm -hmm. about the library? Yeah. Absolutely. I agree with everything that Shantandra said about the lack of people not knowing sources that are available, but also the credibility that your book is in the library. And then when you mention in the library system, I tell people, oh, some of our books are in the, li the National Library System. It brings so much credibility. So I think um, people miss that part, too, the credibility and also the opportunity to be creative and create 
the programs with the library, you know, through your books and just creating those partnerships. I think people don't realize how um, important that is to, to your success and exposure. So those are some of the misconceptions I would say. Absolutely. So for those of you who may be just joining us, we're talking about um, Black Librarians Speak Out. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you so much for joining us um, this morning or maybe afternoon now in your time zone. But either way, welcome. We're really happy to have you all with us. Um, so um, if anyone has questions, please feel free to jot them in the comments and we'll we'll get to your questions. Um, so let's play a little game real fast ladies i promise promise it's simple um it's this or that the book addiction edition um the book lover edition so fiction or non-fiction for me fiction <laughs> what about um, you sandra non-fiction me <laughs> yeah i like non-fiction yeah okay. non-fiction mm -hmm. I'm going to say fiction, even yeah, though team fiction yes, I, 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 love, I love a good story, but yeah. uh, I read a lot of nonfiction because yeah. um, I have a nine-year-old boy and he likes facts. Like he oh. wants to know what is, so we read a lot of nonfiction, but I love a good fiction. Give me a good story all day. Yes. <laughs> Print or ebook? Yeah. Nonfiction. I'll go with either one of them. It's, I'm gonna say I like the convenience of ebook, but there's nothing like handling the pages of a real book. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. I'm definitely gonna say print. And believe it yeah. or not, yeah. a lot of people assume that uh teens want ebooks because they're into technology, but teens love a physical book as well. It's mm. actually the older adults that like yes. ebooks because they can make the print bigger. Mm -hmm. But uh yeah, so I said I love the smell of a new book. Yes. I, yeah, give me the book. I'll hold on to it. But yes. I, I, won't, yeah. I, won't hold, I won't hold on to it yeah. in my house because I don't have room. <laughs> <laughs> and Tony says that she's um, she likes both depending on where she's reading. What about you, um, Ashley? Which one? Are you print or ebook? I will go both. Okay. Both. I like both, but I would definitely love, I agree with the print book, having it in hand, right? Seeing your work, having your work in hand mm -hmm. is not mm -hmm. so. Sandra? I like both, but um, I'm, I prefer print because there is nothing better than holding it. And sometimes you want to make notes on certain things that you read and you mm -hmm. can actually jot it out. You know, it's some quotes you might want to take from the book and ebook you. Yeah, no, I, I, I prefer print. But maybe if I'm traveling or somewhere and you don't feel like carrying books, you know, you can get on and do the e-reading. You know, that's fine. But physically, you know, chilling, no, I like print because I like holding on to it and make notes and, yeah, memories. And Nina Jackson says, print forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'll do one more. Multiple oh, books or one at a time? Mm. I, I, I can do multiple. Yeah. One at a time. Say, what about you? Mm. Well, I would personally prefer one at a time, but because I'm usually on a book committee, I'm reading multiple <laughs> books. So that's why I usually, uh, if someone asks me about a book, oh, I'll say, what does the cover look like? I won't usually remember the, <laughs> the characters' names unless it like really stands out to me, but yeah. So I prefer to read one book at a time, but many times I'm reading multiple. Yeah. Mm. What about you, Ashley? Many or one at a time? I would say multiple books. It depends. Like sometimes, some months I might be reading, depending on what I'm trying to do, two books at a time. But more than for the most part, I like to stick with one. Okay. And you, Sandra? I'm just one. I, I can't do two. I'm going to be in two different worlds. That's too confusing. <laughs> <laughs> just one at a time. So, yeah. Yeah, my brain can't take that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. One at a time, one story at a time. I'm good. Okay. So, and again, if you're joining us and you have questions for our panelists, feel, please feel free to drop them in the comments box. We have, um, we have a little bit left, so we should be good. Um, so for authors, um, specifically indie authors, what's the process of getting their books into the library? 
Um, uh, well, I will say that uh, many libraries, they uh, would like for the books to be professionally reviewed. Okay. So being able to have like um, Kirkus review it, uh, SLJ or LJ, just being able to have um, multiple eyes on it to make sure that there's no, um, you know, misspellings. It's like what they would figure literary fit, but what does that mean? And it's it's important for uh, many librarians or librarians of color to review these books because again, we are coming from uh, different experiences, backgrounds where we could say, yes, this is absolutely a story that needs to be on the shelf. So um, other libraries, uh, it, it just depends. It's not like a clear cut, but I know that many, many libraries do want the, the titles to be peer reviewed, being able to have um, the number in our library database. So that's why uh, the work that Richard Ashby is doing is really, really important in, um, in cataloging these materials. So then it's easier for libraries to purchase. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's really about, um, it doesn't matter if you're published or independently published, but just making sure that the library knows about the title and being able to, to have the ability to purchase uh, various types of materials to get it on the on the shelf. It depends on on each organization. So as an independent author, if I walked into, let's say, one branch of the library and said that I was interested in having them carry my book, would someone at that library then take it to a committee? Like, for example, if they if that library says, well, no, we're not interested, could the person then go to a different branch? or would it have already gone through the entire system for review at that point? Right, so I wish it was really that cut. So some libraries are standalone libraries. So if you went there and the person says, oh, we're not interested, then the buck does kind of stop with them. But when you yeah. are working with libraries that have multiple branches, then nine times out of 10, their ordering is central. So you okay. would want to get your book to their central office, the, the office that's actually ordering the materials. Okay. Um, and I know sometimes, many times, folks will just uh, mail the book directly there. And that can sometimes work, but they get so many books that it is nice to be able to make that connection. So being able to not just send it to the central office like cold with no um attention to anyone being able to get a name to some for someone and being able to let them be aware that this book is coming so they're looking out for it and again reading it and and, and knowledgeable about it so that they have the ability to order it not just for one location but for multiple locations okay all right um sandra or ashley did you have anything that you wanted to to add to um, what Shantae said. I hope you guys are taking notes. <laughs> yes, I agree with Shantae. I mean, <laughs> right, right. But I, in my experience, I have had to go through a, a, a process, and she just did it. They have to review the books and let us know if it's approved and all of that. You know, like I said, some Richard, where I had some um, books, and they had to go through the approval process, and then from there, if we got approved, and then. You know, purchase the books, and then you'll be able to library. So that's my experience with with the okay. library thus far. Yeah, so, what's great is that Richard is in a unique uh, position where he can make that decision. Where if you're working in a big system, like I'll say, like a New York yeah, Public Library, you're working on a public library, it's 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 more convoluted. Like it's more of a process. So. Absolutely. Books do have to be vetted, Tony. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so we've, we've had some questions come in from, from um, our attendees. So um, Marshana wants to know, what would your dream library consist of? And we'll, we'll start with, um, with you, Ashley. What would your dream library consist My of? My dream Oh, that's a good question. Well, I'm a uh, nonfiction, as I stated before, writer. So it would it would definitely be filled with a lot of nonfiction books. And then, of course, I'm 
all of, all about the kids and the you the children authors and have it creating more um opportunities in that space to get their voices out there so that's what my book consists of more nonfiction books with a lot of um books that are focused on kids and black kid voices and getting their voices out there because i do think there's a lot of opportunity in that space as well okay and what about you sandra um michelle obama being you know one of the helpers <laughs> That would be a dream, Michelle Obama being there every day. You might be right there for me. Um, but um, you know, I think to me, there's library can be anything. Um, you know, it's it's all about how you come into utilize the space. And I think the dream will be to have more opportunity for our community um, to have more section that displays our voices and um to have more programs that actually educate people on um the black voices um you know the black authors because again it's a lot of authors that when people hear oh they're black you'd be like oh my god yes they're black you know it's but we don't know about it because we don't we're not that exposed and they don't expose us as much so i think um my dream would be to have more of us more things about us and more educational program on you know um black voices you know um how to write um how to build your dream become an author whatever it is you want to do i think we need that but yeah okay and what about you shantae that is such a good question um so i will say that i would love for the library to kind of my dream library kind of be like the united nations like i'll have someone um from all over the world to be able to have the different languages spoken. Mm. So that's another issue, being able to yeah. have people on staff that speak different languages so that we're able to offer just a variety of programs, programs from around the world. That would be mm. my goal. I would also love, of course, I would love to have Michelle Obama. She could be on the board of trustees, you know? Take, yes, you know, indeed. <laughs> right, she is on the board. <laughs> but also being able hey, to just, hey. <laughs> being able to, um, have programming 24 seven to just let people know that yes, Google is great when you want to look up directions or, or what to eat, but being able to just let them understand the, the electronic resources that libraries have, the databases, why that is so different from the, just going to Google so that they know the information that they're finding is accurate. Again, it's really, really important that we combat fake mm. news because fake news is really what is doing a lot of damage with yeah. a lot of what's going on in this world. What we find on social media sites, what they find on Google, you can find anything because anyone can create a website. It yeah. doesn't mean the website is giving you accurate information. So being able to really, really drive that point home would be my dream. Okay. Mm. Love that. So we only have a few more minutes left. Um, so as we get ready to wrap up, I'll ask a question that I like to ask um, to all the authors um, who I interview for Black Fiction Addiction. What book have you read lately and loved? Um, and we will start with you, Sandra. Um, shit. Oh. <laughs> just pulled out a book um gosh i have to go get it um it's a book about healing okay. so i someone gave it to me i feel really bad but um i'm gonna put it in i'm gonna let you guys know what it's called but okay yeah okay ashley what about you I've currently read the 10 X rule. So I'm always looking for how to grow personally. So, okay. Look, I'm reading the 10 X rule. Okay. And you Shanta. Oh. <laughs> I read so many books. And, and again, I, I say, I have to look at the book jacket. Like, yes, that one. Uh, but 
there's just so many. So <laughs> I can't pick a favorite. It's like trying to see <laughs> your favorite child. But I will say that there's authors that I could just read over and over again. <laughs> there's some classics. So, of course, I'm going to go to Sister Soldier, Coldest Winter Ever. Yes, yes, yes. That's mm. urban fiction at its core, at its finest. Love it. Uh, Jason Reynolds, again. I have two black boys and anytime I have someone who comes in saying that their son is not a reader, I usually will give them a Jason Reynolds title and they come back for more and more. Um, who's another one? Oh, Elizabeth Acevedo. Oh my goodness. Love, love, love her. And then I guess my last one that I'll just represent really quickly, Mahogany Brown. Those are ones that I know I could pick up their book and will not be disappointed. Again, I'm a young adult librarian, so I... I do read a lot of YA, but shout out to uh, the young I, adult yeah. librarians. Yes, that's, yes. That's my, hey, um, I write. Hey. I typically write young adults, so I, I have yes. a. I love it, love it, love it. Um, so Tony Benita said the one she read lately and loved is "Something Sweet" by Joy Avery. Mm. Um, and I, I gotta think, look at. I gotta look at the cover. I'll tell you. Something <laughs> sweet. And yes. I think, um, Chante, I'm kind of like you. Like I read so many, they start running together after a while so it's easier for me to select authors as opposed to um to actual book titles so if we're talking authors um jacinta howard you have jacqueline thomas you have brenda jackson beverly jenkins um i'm thinking i'm trying to think of um like the the indie authors that i love um, Alexandria House, a fan of hers, Christina C. Jones. There's so many indie authors out there who are doing amazing jobs. So shout out to them. Um, I'm trying to see what we have. The most recent book Nina Jackson read was How to, oh, okay, How to Un Yourself. Okay. Um, so there's, there's so many amazing, amazing books. Angela Anderson, The Violin Com Conspiracy by Brendan Slocum is amazing. Mm. Um, this is a debut novel yes. and it was GMA yeah. Book Club pick. Yes. yes. Too many books, not enough time. Isn't that yeah. the truth, right. Nina? It's Absolutely so the truth. So um, as we get ready to wrap up, I want to thank you ladies all so much for joining us today in this conversation where Black librarians speak out. Um, once again, we want to say a special thanks to our partner, BCALA. And again, um, to learn more about our conference speakers, visit thecreativecon.com. Um, we want to offer a round of applause to our guest, um, Shante Burns Simpson, Simpson, president of BCALA, Dr. Ashley Little, founder of Ashley Little Enterprises, LLC, and award-winning and accredited certified publicist, Sandra N. Um, again, thank you all so much for joining us. I'm Chandra sparks Spawn. It has been a pleasure um, talking with you ladies. I really appreciate yes. you taking the time to talk with me today. And um, to our viewers, we thank you all so much for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you for watching. Bye.